So when we talk about social responsibility, what does it mean? Okay, does it mean being a good neighbor? Yes. It's basically a subset of sustainability, which really focuses intensely on how do you interact with your local community, with your region, and with the global economy. And so when you talk about what does it mean to be good versus bad, what is good? You know, define good. Um, so when you talk about being a good social uh, actor, if you will, uh, you contribute to society in a really positive way. You give back to the community. You bring more good into a community than you take away from it. You may bring jobs. You may have local spending that uh, pushes money into the local economy and improves the lives of everyone in that economy, not just the people who work in the business. But when you talk about being a bad player, what is a bad player? What does it mean to be bad? So uh, for the environmental scientist in here, you talk about um, you know, resource sinks. What is a resource sink? So what are the resources? They can be money. You know, What's a money sink? So you take more resources from the local community than you give back. And you send money elsewhere that doesn't give back to the local community. Maybe the wages are poor, and therefore the workers are relying on other social services to provide what should be provided through their employment activities. So if you use up excess resources, you use up excess talent from your, global, from your local economy uh, without putting back into the community, that would be considered to be bad. So, so we're going to talk a little bit today about our case study and uh, power service is in its infancy with developing some of these systems. So it's not really about our performance, it's really about the process, the self-assessment process that we're going to use to get better over time. Um, and hopefully you can see the way the tool works a little bit and find applications in your industry that can help you uh, with your management systems and with driving improvement that will make your business more sustainable over time. So we'll talk about the self-assessment tool that ERA developed, um, talk a little bit about the corrective and preventive action item database that lets you follow up on, you know, if you have any gaps in your system or if you identify opportunities to get better, you know, how do you track that? How do you follow up with that? And then, you know, what does it mean to have what they call a continuous improvement cycle? You know, are, are you ever done? What is a sustainable business? What does that even mean? And then what is a culture? What is a sustainability culture? So talk a, talking a little bit about self-assessment tools. Now, I'm really passionate about what they call self-assessments because, um, you know, just like the folks from Toyota were talking about a little bit earlier today, you know, I've been in those meetings where, you know, you've had unannounced compliance audits, you know, specifically, you know, EPA risk management programs or air compliance auditors. And without having a robust self-assessment tool to identify your own gaps and fix them ahead of the regulatory agency, you will be looking at um, potential funds. Now, in both, uh, in three cases, uh, I've had, you know, EPA come to my facility, do a full risk management program audit that lasted several days uh, and have no findings. And the only way to do that really is to look hard at your own systems and be there and fix the gaps ahead of any regulatory agency. We talk about diligence. What does it mean to be diligent? What does it mean to be you know, uh, good in your profession? So I think if you've got an E, an O, or an S in your job title, if you've got the environmental piece in your job title, if you've got the O, you're the owner, you're the operator. If you've got the S, you've got sustainability or safety uh, in your job title. That means you're responsible. You're responsible for looking at your activities. You're responsible for your processes. You're responsible for making sure that your processes are in compliance and uh, getting better over time, not stagnant. So that's what self-assessments can do for a business. So we'll put this one in. It's basically a form, the dynamic form platform. They, um, ERA was able to put this in place in a matter of weeks. And you know, we, put, we went ahead, went through the sustainability self-assessment tool. And this particular 
format was a protocol that we had you know, borrowed from the automotive industry. Power Service is a diesel fuel additive manufacturer, so we said, okay, well automotive, um, there's a lot of uh, commonality there, and our clients are in the automotive industry as well. So we say, okay, well here's our sustainability uh, self-assessment, you know, plug it in there, fill out the forms, and it's uh, pretty easy. So you go through, you uh, basically click the uh, buttons, uh, and the cool thing about the self-assessment tools is it doesn't have to be this particular assessment. It can be any other assessment that you want to perform on your business. It can be, for example, the ISO 14001 standard. If you want to do your internal audit, document your audit in the software and document your follow-up actions in the software, then they all can work together. So this is one example, the sustainability, um, social corporate responsibility self-assessment. Um, but in the concept of talking about the self-assessments, I was thinking along the lines of the various program reviews that are required by OSHA. So for example, um, respiratory protection annual program reviews, lockout tagout annual program reviews. And then uh, you talk about concepts like lean manufacturing. How many people in this room you know, can see a decline in staff, of EHS staff over time? Uh, so you try to learn how to make your processes very lean so that you can manage multiple activities, you know, even under lean conditions. Um, and then when you talk about sustainability, the companies who are going to pull ahead are the ones who have systems in place that can drive those things even through changing staff, decline in staff, you know, how do you manage uh, multiple, multiple activities? I once had, um, I had about five people working for me uh, one of them left the company, and then one of them all, all of a sudden had a medical issue and was out for six months. So here I am managing 15 chemical manufacturing sites, and I'm supposed to have five people working for me, and all of a sudden I have three. And this is during the front part of the year when all the reports are due. <laughs> so, so here I am, I'm like, okay, well how do, I, how do I, number one, know what's due and what's not due? Uh, number two, manage, manage the task load and keep everything running because missing a report is not acceptable when you're in, in environmental science and environmental management. So because we had these uh, compliance systems in place, we knew when the target dates were uh, and you can easily track what's due when and that's the only real way to manage uh, what's going on when you've got staff changeover. So. That's why, you know, when I joined Power Service, I was really interested in the software platform, the compliance database, load that in there. Um, that way, you know, if I win the lottery tomorrow, my boss knows what's due. Uh, she owns the company. I want to set it up in a way that, you know, she's, she knows what's due and can manage that even if she doesn't have an EHS staff. So the really great thing about uh, loading a self-assessment into the ERA platform is, one, the ability to add comments. So, you know, how many times have you gone back and looked at an audit report that somebody filled out, you know, two, three, five years ago? What were they thinking? What did they look at? You know, so in my example, I say, okay, you know, uh, one of the comments was, okay, well, do we have a sustainability report? No. But one of the cool things about ERA is that you know, you're putting together the tools to help companies, small to mid-sized companies, uh, publish these sorts of reports that will help us put our information out there and communicate uh, really transparently uh, with our customers and with our stakeholders. So you can add a comment there. And then again, you know, you talk about uh, one of the questions were training programs for sustainability. So uh, the comment there in the audit form, you click, yes, we have training programs. And then you say, okay, well, training sessions are held during the safety meetings uh, for the office and warehouse stuff. So three years from now, I won the lottery. Somebody has taken over my position. They know exactly what was evaluated while that self-assessment was being completed and it becomes part of the facility record and it becomes part of the story that gets told 
for my facility. So again, uh, the other cool thing about the ERA software is you know, the, the audit process. How many of you have been on an audit team? Got four or five people, right? Four or five people going to a facility. How long does it take to put out an audit report? <laughs> right? <laughs> You know, I mean, I've gone and performed audits and other people would be the lead person in charge of that audit. You might be waiting, you know, two or three months for your report to come back. Um, so imagine, imagine, if you will, uh, having a tablet, you know, walking out, auditing the facility, using a pre-populated protocol, you know, typing the data in there while you're performing the audit. And then at the end of the day, you hit a button and your dynamic report generates an audit report that's time dated for the date that the audit was completed and your corrective actions are already loaded into the database. So that's the idea and how we come about the self-assessment tool. Um, and then, you know, you talk about how do you train the younger generation? How do you get someone who is fresh out of college bring them to a facility, do they need to be a certified safety professional to audit a lockout tagout program? Not if the tools are there that they can follow along. So if you, um, you, know, you have a person, they're coming on board, you want to train them on self-assessments, hey, here's our, here's our protocol, you know, and it's pre-populated, they can do an audit uh, and it's very easy for them to follow and they're part of the new generation and they don't have to be a CSP. They can learn. They can learn from the form itself. They can learn from the comments that you left behind of what they should be looking at. So when you talk about passing the torch, the only way you're going to pass the torch is to leave the, the breadcrumb trail showing them where you've been, what you were thinking, what did you look at. And then that way, you leave them better than you got there. So um, the other part is how many times have you uh, been to a facility auditing or, you know, and find out, okay, well, we've had your four or five different self-assessments, four or five different audits, you know, and the action items might be tracked four or five different ways. Okay. Oh, there's a spreadsheet here. Oh, we wrote them on the board here. Uh, we did a, something here and we we're tracking it through a meeting. Well, you know what? Wouldn't it be great if they were all in the same spot, loaded together through the dynamic form process? So if you have an incident and you have an action item arising from the incident, or if you have a compliance task, or if you have an, a self-assessment follow-up action item, wouldn't it be great if they were all in the same place? So in our dynamic form for self-assessments, and remember it doesn't have to be a social responsibility assessment, it can be any other program that you want to assess. Uh, you can create a follow-up task. If you find a deficiency, you want to close a gap, add an action item, and it pre-populates into your database. So if you're not using an action item database to track compliance, you know, here's a plug for that. Um, and then you can categorize those by departments and by tasks and see, okay, well, you know, we have some follow-up action items that we identified as a gap during our assessment. We follow them up so that way when the regulatory guy comes in three months later, hey, you already fixed a gap and you don't get a fine. So, uh, so talking about that, continuous improvement in sustainability programs. You know, where does that come from? Where, what is continuous improvement and where does it come from? A lot of my work in the, my graduate program had to do with uh, management systems and employee engagement and the relationship between sustainable culture and continuous improvement, but not only that, but you know, performance. Because at the end of the day, if your facilities are not performing, you're not, you're not getting better. So you can have charts, but if people are still getting hurt and you're still having environmental incidents, and, you, and then nothing's really changing. So how do you get better? How does it work? So uh, management systems, whatever management system it is, whether it's a 14,001 program or responsible care 14,001 or, or an OSHAS 18,001 or 45,001 or maybe some other 
management system, uh, you know, it all starts with a management review. Where are you? Where are you going? What do we want to accomplish? Set goals. And not only that, but communicate with the employees and involve them. The really cool thing about having uh, easy to use self-assessments is that you do not have to be a safety professional in order to perform the assessment. Some of the most sustainable safety culture plants I've worked with have had the, the lowest guy, the loader, and the operator helping to perform the assessments not only in their own operating area, but for other operating areas. You know, can you imagine an operator going to a laboratory and using a, a tool and being able to engage with other employees about the safety? So at the end of the day, you know, if you've continuously improved and you've engaged and interacted with your internal stakeholders, they own the program just as much as you do and they're engaged as well and they, they can participate in a way that maybe they haven't before. And so when you do this, when you engage with your employees, um, they become part of finding solutions. And it all happens with coming up with an idea, implement the idea. Come up with a new idea, implement the idea. Be very transparent with the idea, where it originated, you know, say, the loader had a great idea of how to reduce spills. This is what we did to reduce spills. Communicate that with the other employees. The loader's an, a hero, and then everybody else wants to be a part of that. And that's how you get uh, buy-in. And how many times as EHS managers do we go out, work directly with the person doing a job, and you know, work alongside them? You know, put on your boots. Uh, go engage with them, watch every step of the task, you know, write down their ideas. A lot of times they're very, very much more familiar with the risks than we are. Once the programs are in place and you get that engagement, then the opportunities kind of seem to flow in, almost like a river. You can't stop them. Sometimes you're, uh, whenever you have this engagement and this back and forth transparency and communication, you'll have sometimes more ideas than you can even implement at one time. And so you start a project board. Okay, we have sustainability projects that will make our business better. Let's start documenting them. And maybe we can't get to them now, but we'll put them on the board and then we'll follow up. And when the opportunity arises, we can execute a new project that will make the employees feel better because you took their idea and you implemented it. And then, you know, you start having a culture of that all of a sudden, you know, it sustains itself. They'll keep getting better. I've been gone now from some plants for, you know, five, six months because I left the company and guess what? They're still getting better and I'm not there. <laughs> they have it, you know, once you get on the roll, it's like a boulder rolling down the hill. You just can't stop it. Um, it gets really exciting. So uh, what do you have to do to have this kind of culture? Well, it all starts with the top. We know that. We're EHS people. It starts with the top. It's management support. It's the resources to implement the programs, whether it's a new sample, you know, sample station design that's going to reduce emissions, um, whether it's a different type of container. Uh, it's management support of those programs. Um, employee engagement. And then leadership, you know, we're the EHS professionals. We can facilitate, we can lead those directives. And you have to have that ability to lead and not always lead from the top down, but sometimes lead from the bottom up. You know, lead from the bottom up. Build your programs from the bottom up and they will not fall because the base is strong. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about sustainability and Kaizen, uh, again, uh, when you start having these sorts of events where, you know, continuous improvement becomes part of the culture, you're going to see increases in business efficiency. Things are going to get faster. Processes are going to get faster. Resource utilization will go down and you'll see, you know, fewer, fewer process upsets, fewer um, maintenance down, downtime, and your processes will get better and uh, over time. You know, these types of projects that uh, they were talking about, lean manufacturing, uh, review employee benefits and their engagement programs. Um, you'll see impact reductions from your environmental uh, issues, decreases in raw material costs and decreases in disposal and emissions. 
you know, I've, I've been at Power Service for like four months and I've already managed to save them over $20,000 in certain costs associated with management of their environmental programs. And this is for a very small company. So uh, when you talk about that and then you look at maybe larger scale programs and larger scale processes, uh, the opportunities are endless. And then, you know, we're talking about a uh, regulatory climate. The regulatory climate is always changing. There's always changes to the OSHA rules, always changes to the EPA rules. Um, and then uh, if you have nimble management systems, systems that are driven by software that can be easily changed over time, uh, then you can add the new requirement in and go. So many management systems require you to assess your own compliance with legal requirements, your own compliance with your permit. So if you get a new permit condition, add that to your assessment, check the box and go. If you're managing multiple sites, you can measure one facility against the next to see from the assessments and the dynamic forms, you can see who's doing better and who's doing worse at implementing the changes. So um, we talked about global commerce. So uh, Power Service is positioning itself uh, through its business deals to do more global commerce. And through that comes new requirements. We have new customers coming on board that expect the type of programs that are higher level, world-class programs. And the only way you're going to get world-class is to have systems in place that drive you to get better over time. So, um, Power Service is a diesel additive manufacturer, but in the course of this conference, I added this slide yesterday, I've heard people talk about a sustainable forestry initiative. Hey, that's a, that's a consensus standard. That could be an assessment. Uh, supply chain management, supply chain assessment, that could be used in the ERA software tool. Um, they've already got the ISO 14001 technical specification loaded. But how many folks in here have heard of something called responsible care and those requirements? So think about putting the responsible care codes into the software and then documenting how you comply with each of the code elements. That's what Power Service is going to do. Uh, different types of safety management systems and then internal regulatory compliance assessments. When was the last time you went line by line through your facility's Title V permit and documented how you were complying with each of the permit conditions. Has it been over a year? How often does your permit change? How often do you do that? Um, so these are the types of things that can, uh, as a company, help you close the gaps between what's required and what you currently have. And if there's gaps, you will be able to find them ahead of any type of uh, issue. And that's how you're sustainable, is because it's a self-healing process. Sustainability is about having a process that will heal its own wounds and get better over time and withstand the turbulence that comes with economy and personnel changes.